Howdy, and welcome to the show. I picked up one of these 30 volt, five amp lab power supplies off eBay a couple of weeks ago. And I thought I'd do a review on that, see whether or not it's something that you would consider buying, uh, and is it worth the money? Any good at all? Let's have a look. Okay, so first things first, physical dimensions. Um, they are quite compact, this particular model, and there are two main flavors. There's this skinny version with a single display, and then you probably would have seen a double wide version um, with an extra cutout over here and two displays, one showing the amperage and one showing the voltage. So this is the uh, slightly smaller version, rated at 150 watts, uh, and that pretty much works out right considering it's supposed to be uh, 30 volts at five amps. So physical dimensions first. So they're quite a compact little unit. This one's measuring 200 millimeters long. It is 155 millimeters tall. And the overall width is 80 millimeters. So just going around the actual device on the front, uh, so as you can probably see, on the front display here, your standard LCD. Uh, this is a QJE branded one, but I'm pretty certain you'll find many different branded versions of these. Um, four controls, and the four controls are uh, voltage, course adjustment and fine adjustment, uh, and the current course adjustment and fine adjustment. I did actually find these to be around the wrong way, uh, not the course and the fine, but I would have preferred my voltage down one side and my amperage down the other side rather than going across this way for the voltage adjustment and across that way for the current adjustment but that's just personal preference okay so two binding posts at the front there so they're the banana plug variety going in as well as a screw terminal and simply power switch there nothing around the rest of the unit on the back you've got a standard three pin uh, plug and the fuse is just below that and a fan. Uh, the fan controller on these is actually a little bit more intelligent than the previous versions that I've seen which just operate once you turn the unit on. This is a thermo controlled fan um, so it won't click in I think it's 50 degrees Celsius before the fan actually activates. Uh, yep so nothing on either side and on the bottom just a few feet and three screws holding down some of the internal componentry and a couple of screws holding on the faceplate. All right, so that's the exterior of the unit. Let's take a look inside. Okay, we'll take a look inside the unit. So it's just four screws. So the lid just lifts off like that. Uh, and this actually forms part of the, the chassis strength. So if you're looking at the way the unit's actually put together, uh, it's just a big U. Um, this has no bridging across the top, so there is a little bit of flex in the unit. You can probably see that there. So in a larger unit or something more robust, you probably see some framework on the inside, but because you're, you're realistically always going to be running it with the hood on, uh, that forms part of the structural integrity of the entire unit. Uh, but even that by itself, it's not falling apart. I'm, I'm having to put a bit of pressure on that to make it move. So on the inside of this little unit, okay, a couple of transformers, um, a fair few passive components, uh, some very large caps, um, and there's a particular feature of those caps that I'll, I'll demonstrate uh, a little later. So yeah, we've got the transformer components, some resistors, a lot of passives. Uh, obviously on the back here, this is the main display driver board. And here you've got your controller board for the front controls. Um, as I said, number of large caps floating around in there. Some fairly decent wiring, that's fairly uh, good gauge. Uh, going through to the um, multipole switch down here, which is your main power switch. I think that down the bottom there would be the thermistor, uh, reading the temperature and controlling the operation of the fan. Um, and buried in the back there between the controlling board and this very large aluminium heatsink, uh, your power regulator. 
and another one down there. So yeah, fairly uh, simple design, old through hole components, uh, except for uh, this board here. Not quite sure what that one's doing, but that is a removable board. Uh, and on the round through the back, very large aluminium heatsink, just one dirty great slab of aluminium, probably around about four to five mil thick, and that is attached through to those two regulators dissipating the heat. Uh, I've had this running at five amps, um, putting out, uh, wasn't quite 30 volts, but it was definitely the entire amperage being drawn. The fan did activate, but this only got warm. So it's quite capable of continually running 30 volts at five amps from what I've been able to determine so far. Not too happy with that. You've got one of the capacitor, you just see that in there, this particular capacitor which is running off the two binding, uh, bridging the two binding posts. Um, coming from, can't quite tell which terminal it is, but it is coming from this capacitor and you see a grounding wire just hitting the frame down there. Um, although it's probably doing the job, uh, that does not look very pretty at all. Um, but I've not been able to pick up any problems with this unit running thus far. Uh, the rest of it on the inside in there actually looks fairly good. There isn't really anything too concerning. Uh, it's it's um, grounded out properly down here, uh, although some of the soldering might leave a little bit to be desired. Uh, but ultimately, it does do the job. Nothing compared to a much more expensive um, professional level lab supply. But for $68, $70, not too bad. All right, let's turn it on and uh, see how it actually does its job. All right, so I've just got the unit uh, turned on, uh, nothing connected at this stage. Um, so operationally, it's not too bad. These knobs are fairly good, uh, decent amount of resistance to them. So it's supposed to run at 30 volts and that's wound all the way up. So we're reading 26.4. And on the fine adjustment, wind that all the way up and we're getting 31.5 volts. So the current, uh, the current works uh, as a limiting. This is a current limiting power supply. It's not a current setting power supply. So you can't say I want two amps to go into my um, product or device. Um, you can simply say I want no more than five amps, no more than 2.5 and so on, uh, depending on where you have the settings. So we're in uh, current mode here and you can uh, adjust your current. So obviously wound all the way out, you're talking five amps, uh, halfway you're roughly talking two and a half amps and all the way down you're talking zero amps. Um, so we'll leave it roughly halfway, about two and a half. So yep, you can definitely get 30 volts out. There is no warmth to the unit at this point and we've got nothing running from it. One interesting thing to note, something I mentioned before about the capacitor, you turn the device actually off and you notice that the display went off in around about a second. I'll turn it back on and I'll change the voltage, uh, not touching the amps, I'll change the voltage down to, oh, we'll go with 12 volts. Now we'll go with 15. Okay, so 15 volts, and that is half of the potential 30 volts that the, uh, the unit is capable of, of uh, delivering. Turn the power off. There's your one second. There's your two seconds. So that is definitely the capacitor inside there doing that. Depending on what the amperage and the voltage is that you've got set, uh, the capacitor ta takes a different amount of time to discharge. So just leaving the unit on, it does come with two leads, banana plug one end and alligator on the other, and uh, they're not too bad. So anyway, let's get this unit up and running and uh, power a couple of DC motors. What I've got hooked up here is a fairly uh, large 12 volt DC motor. Just connect one of those, power up the unit. 
Now we'll dial this back down to 12 volts. There we go. Uh, one other interesting thing to note, even though this particular voltage range is zero through to 30 volts, the fine adjustment is a percentage of where you're at. So if you're only dialing up 10 volts, you'll have around about a two volt uh, adjustment. If you're up around 20 volts, you'll have around about a four volt fine adjustment. If you're up around 30 volts, you'll have around about a uh, six volt fine adjustment, give or take. So it is a percentage of the uh, position of the coarse adjustment as de uh, depends on what you get out of the fine adjustment. Okay, so 12 volts and I've roughly, by eye, got the uh, current limited to about one amp. And as you can possibly hear, you can see 0.8 of an amp draw. It's only just spinning up. It's quite a fast RPM motor, this one. So if I up the amperage, still producing 12 volts. We're putting out 1.1, 1.2 amps. Give it about two and a half. Okay. So I've changed the amperage to two and a half on the dial there, but obviously this motor is only going to pull about an amp. Um, there's no load on it, so that's all we can demonstrate for the amperage. But the current, uh, sorry, the uh, voltage we can turn up a bit higher. I think this is rated to around about 18 volts. So let's dial it up. Here we go, 13. Sixteen volts. And there you go, eighteen volts. Still only drawing an amp. If I wind down the amperage. Still only giving it nine point nine. Dial it up slightly over an amp and it's not really drawing much more than about 1.3 so anything above that you can see me turning this anything over the maximum draw of the unit of the uh, motor anything over that maximum draw of the motor it doesn't really matter what I'm doing to the current limiting uh, until I hit its actual real limit somewhere around about that one amp point just there you can hear that drill just slow I'm not touching the voltage, even though the voltage is showing it's uh, reduced. This is because I'm limiting the current going through. And if I give it plenty of current, I can also limit the voltage being supplied. And almost instant off there, because I had a load on the power supply. All right, so a bench power supply wouldn't be much good if it wasn't accurate, so we'll just uh, turn on the multimeter here, set to volts, and we'll see what we can get. All right, set to 12 volts, we'll check voltage first. All right, so 11.91 volts reading on multimeter. So if we just bottom out this voltage range and say so we're reading 0.1 on here and it's only got a uh, single decimal resolution and we're reading 0 0.03 on the multimeter so yeah that's fairly reasonable so if we dial this up to uh, 10 volts so that's not too bad using the fine adjustment I dialed it up to 10.1 here and just dialed it back a fraction to read 10 and we are reading 10 on the multimeter so pretty happy there so I'll just whip up through to 20 volts. So 20 volts, 19.96. Yep, pretty happy. And whip out to, see so if we can get 30. And 29.9 volts, reading 30 on here. That is pretty good. What about the current? Okay, so I've got the meter set to the uh, 20 amp range. Um, I can't use milliamps at the moment, I've blown a fuse. 
but uh, this is uh, connected up, dialed all the way down on the amperage at the moment, uh, reading 0 0.08 amps, so we've got two digits of resolution for the amperage, and reading zero on the meter. So let's dial this up via the course, and let's see if we can get to uh, one amp. Okay, so one amp, 0.9 amps, it's a little bit shy there. What about two amps? Okay, so two amp reading on the supply, 1.9 reading on the uh, meter. So a bit of a pattern of merging. We'll go straight past three and we'll go to four amps. So four amps, 3.88, just a fraction shy of that 3.9. So again, just that little bit out, but consistently out. And we'll just dial straight to the top, 5.05 amp reading. And I've still got the fine adjustment as well. Okay, so I can actually get up to 5.5 amps. There's no actual load or anything running on the supply, but we can uh, statically get up to 5.54 amp output. We're reading 5.4 on the supply. So generally speaking, about 0.1 uh, of an amp light, but that's still fairly good for a little power supply like this. Okay, so just to wrap up, um, $68, $70 little bench power supply, current limiting, but 30 volts at five amps. And uh, are they worth it? Yeah, I would say they are. They're fairly lightweight. It's around about one and a half kilo. Uh, they don't take up much bench space at all. And they do give you a nice, fine, adjustable uh, voltage range with a five amp um, current limit. So, yep. If you haven't got one of, uh, one of those for yourself just yet, uh, for that amount of money, I would say they're well worth a buy. So thanks very much for joining me and watching the show. Subscribers are always welcome, so feel free to subscribe. That would be great. And I hope you'll join me again next week.